This just in, the federal government is not good at spending your money. A new report from the St. Louis Fed on the Pandemic Paycheck Protection Program shows 75% of the $800 billion plus dollars did not reach employees. And that's not all. Senior columnist Rick Newman here with the findings from this, well, let's just call it debacle. Rick, this was uh, government at its finest. Oh, well, we had to do something back in 2020. And the yep. problem with the PPP, the Paycheck Protection Program, as it's known, I, and I think this was well understood at the time, at least by the people who designed it, was that Congress needed to do something very, very fast because we had uh, an unprecedentedly rapid uh, contraction in the economy then. I mean, think back two years ago, the economy just stopped in place all at once because of the COVID lockdowns. So uh, Congress made a trade-off when it, when it passed that legislation. It put a ton of money into the economy right away, but that money was not very, very well targeted. Uh, any business that had fewer than 500 employees bas basically uh, could tap into that money, and then um, much of that money was forgiven through uh, legislation that came later. So the authors of this report, they, they don't say this was just $800 billion down the drain. What they say is, uh, given the expediency uh, of the moment, it's understandable why Congress did it the way they did, and it's not necessarily clear there would have been a better way to do it, but what they say is now is the time to start putting in place the kind of structure we would need for a better targeted program if this type of thing ever happens again. So, um, you know, the, 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 the only worst thing in government doing something is probably government doing nothing. And there probably was no way to implement a really good uh, relief program two years ago. And considering how quickly they needed to respond, how quickly people were losing jobs. But I mean, some people received checks, weren't sure they were getting them. Other people are sort of wondering, why am I paying as a taxpayer, paying more considering what I got out of this? Are there any sort of solutions that you see in terms of really untangling this mess as to where all this money actually went? Yeah, the reason that Congress did it the way they did uh, in 2020 was uh, there was no infrastructure in place for doing anything that was more targeted. Now, we do have what we do have one thing that actually works pretty well, which is the unemployment insurance system, which is administered by states. Uh, that was a huge and very important source of relief for a lot of people, and that was separate from the PPP. So what these economists um, recommend is that uh, the United States develop something that Europe actually is pretty good at, which is called work sharing. Um, and that is a system where when you have a, a sharp contraction in the economy, instead of businesses just laying off, um, you know, tons of workers, which is what happens in the United States, create programs and incentives that allow companies to keep workers on the payroll, but um, reduce hours and do other things so that you can sort of spread the pain among your entire workforce, but keep those people on the payroll, even if it's at reduced pay, so that their connection to the labor force uh, remains in effect. Um, one of the biggest problems we have in the US economy is people get laid off and then they have to start all over again. They might, they might get um, federal, or federal or state uh, unemployment aid while they're out of work, but then they have to completely start over again you, you know, usually you have to you look for a, a job with a different company. Sometimes you end up looking for a job in a totally different field. Um, and I think what these uh, economists are saying is we can do better than that. Let's start laying the groundwork now for keeping people on payrolls in a way that doesn't cost taxpayers uh, nearly one trillion dollars and is more efficient than what we uh, did in 2020. Yeah, Rick, one of the eye popping numbers here is the cost per job saved for one year. The number is between $169 and $258,000 per job, an astounding number. It's one thing to look back, it's another to look forward, and things like, oh, let's say student debt uh, relief. What have we learned that we can apply differently next time in your estimation? Yeah, and just to put that number in context, the average, the median salary in the United States is around $55,000, okay. so, um, so we were paying, you know, three to four to five times as much as somebody um, somebody would get paid to keep those jobs. Um, I, you know, I think we I think we learn each time we go through something like this, uh, Dave. So if you think back to 2008 and 2009, those bailouts were way worse. If you remember what happened then, those were Federal Reserve and Treasury Department bailouts in the infamous TARP program which um, went, to, went to banks. 
So what the, you know, what the uh, government did in 2008-9 was save the banks as a way to save the financial system and try to uh, salvage the economy. That was incredibly unpopular, especially when we found that you know, these backdoor bailouts, the banks that got bailouts went and bailed out their counterparties, and it looked like it was a Wall Street bailout that had nothing for Main Street. So the PPP was better than that, and I think you could argue it did contribute to a really, really fast um, recovery in the economy. So next time, uh, target it even more effectively at lower income workers and the people who get separated first when we see uh, when we see recessions like this, and maybe less at the people who own and run the companies. Certainly a lot of lessons learned there. We do thank you, our very own Rick Newman.